I don't know how to begin. It was unusually very difficult for me until I started to put my terrible past on paper. I never thought about this. Only this, which I met by coincidence, Professor Froman, in 1986, I never would wrote my life story. It is not so easy for a Holocaust survivor to relive his terrible past, especially to write that this, to put in black in ink and white paper the suffering of a man in sex long years. If not this unusual man who came in 1986 to Anne Frank exhibit in the city of Los Angeles, I would not have, I would never wrote my story. It was an unusual exhibit about a little Jewish girl who had the courage and the spirit at the time of her suffering not to lose the belief that still are good people ready to help and help is needed. This some broken will, believing, was her keeping going and living to the last minute of her short life, till she died of hunger and sickness, a few weeks before the liberation in a Nazi death camp. This belief is a symbol of courage. Not only of a Jewish little girl who suffers so much, but of all of humanity that someone believed he didn't lose the belief in the humanity to the last minute and short life full of suffering, in more in pain. She, this little girl, was my inspiration, which gave me a starting, gave me strength to, to believe in myself and to go on until I finish my book. At this exhibit, I was a dozen. Professor Froman and Mrs. Froman came as visitors. I remember the moment when I was lecturing to a group of women from San Diego, recalling the memory of Anne Frank, her moment of suffering, the terrible moment of hiding, and then the last minute in, minute in, death, in the death camp before she died. And then I started to compare my life in suffering in face of death, comparing my belief with the unbroken belief of this little Jewish youth, which keep us going to the last moment, underlining the difference in age. She, a little girl, and I already a young man in college. Then I pointed at my wife with the lining that, if not the belief, that I will see in her, which I never lost, in the darkest moment of my miserable life, or out of the belief in the Almighty, which I never lost, I would not survive. This belief was so strong in me that I overcome and survived. I was talking about pain, maybe 15 minutes, and then when I finished, I was standing talking to the visitors. Professor Foreman approached me, asking me very gentle why I did not write my life story. He said it's unusually and very important not to be forgotten. I said, I don't know. I don't have time. I don't have patience. He said to me, but, as his wife was standing beside me, Mr. Prima, please, you write your life story and I will help you to edit it, your story. If not these people who encouraged me to sit down, and then they gave me instruction how to start to write the story of my life, without they help, I would never have wrote my life story. The story of six long years of pain and suffering. It was not so easy for me. It took me six long years, so many years, till I finished my book, Sometime at the beginning, when I started to write my past, I was crying. The memories of the time of suffering have been still fresh with me. I need a little bit more time that I can sit down and write my story. It took me weeks till I had the courage to sit down and start to write again. I wrote a few nights, and then I stopped again. My past came back to me. I could not sleep at night. I ran out from the room that Helen would not see me crying. It was terrifying for me to relive the pain again. I know the months passed. I sit down and I start to write my story, the story of inhuman suffering. Now, I don't know if I would have the patience to sit down and to start to write again. I'm a little older. Yes, it is not so easy for me to relive my past again. I finish my story. Yes, it took me a long time six long years, and I was reliving my past suffering 
as I was putting my story on paper. Now that it is over, I feel good that I did it. This is my story, which I put on paper, which will be judged by people, by readers, and by the future generation. If you're strong enough, come with me. Let's turn the pages, go back in the time, back to the kingdom of death, and I relieve the agony of a people condemned to death with no escape. A people chosen by God, who believe in him, in he, in he who abandoned them and put them to the color. You will go with me in the shadow of death, see and experience how Master Aston tore into the machine of destruction, believing in a Satan Hitler. You will see how little children die with eyes wide open, looking around and asking why, why they have to die so young, so innocent. And at the end, experience with me, when no hope is around, how human species behave, how strong is the human spirit, how a little spark of hope can turn a human being into an unbroken marble, which will survive the angel of death. Feel how strong was his belief, which was keeping go on living and to survive, and then come back with me from the kingdom of death and start a new life, a life full of hope for better tomorrow. See how he who survived still believe that after all, there are still some good people ready to help when help is needed. Now, this is my story. I was born in the city of Rano. My parents were from middle class. My father was most of his life in the tannery business. This was the trait of our family from generation. My grandfather was in the tannery business. My uncle had been in the tannery business. And my father was still in the same trade. We have been very wealthy. If I rec can recall my youth, I have everything which a child can dream. When I was three years of age, I have been sent to a religious school, a cheder, where they teach only how to pray, to read the Bible, and to interpret the Torah in Hebrew only. Still, I remember the moment when my mother went with me to the cheder, and, and when we stepped in, the rabbi, the teacher, told to my mother, asking, have you brought me a gift? This place is for boys. You have to cut this hair. In this moment, I can recall when my mother went me, with me to the barber shop and the barber cut my hair, I was crying. In this moment, I still feel the little tears running down my cheek. At the age of four, I start to read and pray in a book and also I start to read the Bible, the interpretation of the Torah, Russian. Every Saturday after dinner, I have to go to my grandfather's house for a test, rehearsal. From my mother's side, we have rabbis in our family. My great-grandfather was a rabbi in the city of Radom. His name was Rabbi Rachmi Goodman. His son, my grandfather, brother was a rabbi. His name was Israel Goodman. He was the rabbi in Kishinev. When they have the program in 1905, he escaped, came back, came back to our city in 1942. At the time of the liquidation of our city, he went with the Jewish community to the Kekashchamber. I can recall the moment when he was leading the community with a towers over his head to a train in the city of Radom. He escaped the Cossack and the Nazi burning in the home of the Branca. Now going back to my youth. I can see this moment myself Saturday afternoon at my grandfather's house. My uncle, the rabbi, was sitting with my grandfather at a table in the living room. My father was standing on the side. I was standing in front of them. The Bible opened in front of me, and they have been testing me. I had to read a few verses from the Torah and then interpretation Russian. When I know I get an apple, and my uncle, the rabbi, turned to my grandfather, shaking him with his head. I know it was okay, otherwise, my grandfather, if I did not know, turned to my father with a loud voice, asked him what I was doing the whole week. I have to come next week to prove to them that I studied this week. And I know this week the part of the Torah and all the interpretation. Then I get my apple. This was the sign of approval. This was the way in which Jewish people raised their children. This was the goal of for generation of our people. 
to educate children, parents work hard.